From the towering Wasatch Mountains of the American Southwest, we welcome you to this episode of Undiscovered Utah. This show focuses on the mysteries that surround the rugged, difficult, and sometimes deadly American Southwest. I'm your host, JB, and tonight we're going to share with you the story of Ruby Hollow and the surrounding area. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we have to act on faith and faith alone. That was certainly the case for young Shadrach Lunt. Shadrach Lunt was a sheep herder that ran sheep in an area called Ruby Hollow. Shadrach's faith and conviction was about to undergo a test that few men could pass. While Shadrach was tending his sheep, he often did a little prospecting on the side. It was more of just a hobby. One day, Shadrach came across an ore sample that looked to him to be a nice chunk of silver ore. Now, Shadrach was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the prominent religion in the Mountain West at the time. The president of the church at that time was President Brigham Young. Brigham Young had made it clear to the saints that prospecting was nearly forbidden and certainly not encouraged at that time by the church leader. He is quoted as saying, Whenever I see a prospector going along with an old mule that can hardly stand up, with only a frying pan and a tattered quilt, I say, there goes a millionaire in prospect. These millionaires are all over the country. They are in the mountains, on our roads, and in our streets. And they haven't a sixpence between them. Brigham Young preferred the saints to be self-sufficient through farming, raising livestock, and other more consistent livelihoods. So when Shadrach discovered the silver ore, he had to make a choice. What would be your choice? Would you choose to follow the prophet's counsel or see how much money you could make? I guess it would boil down to how much faith Shadrach had in Brigham Young being a prophet of God. Apparently, Shadrach had a lot of faith in Brigham Young and his words of wisdom. Shadrach took the silver ore to his bishop and asked his bishop what he should do with his discovery. Shadrach's bishop in turn notified Brigham Young of the discovery, and Brigham Young stayed consistent with his counsel and instructed that Shadrach should just forget about his discovery and stick to herding sheep. And that's just what Shadrach did. He went back to tending the sheep and never proceeded to stake a claim on the silver ore he found. Then, in 1869, a cowboy by the name of George Rust, who was not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, was camping in the Ruby Hollow area. George made the same discovery that Shadrach had made years earlier and found what appeared to be a rich silver or vein in a ledge above the hollow. In December of that same year, George Rust and seven other cowboys staked their claims in Ruby Hollow. The ore these cowboys pulled out of the ledge essayed at about $1,500 of silver per ton, or 10,000 ounces of silver per ton. That's extremely rich ore. Of course, the news of the rich ore deposit spread like wildfire throughout the region. By 1871, 500 claims had been made in Ruby Hollow and the surrounding area. Miners were building cabins and establishment that resembled stores started to pop up. Soon saloons were also built to provide entertainment for the miners throughout the Ruby Hollow area. Not only was this area rich in silver, the miners soon discovered deposits of copper, lead, zinc, and gold. The mills and smelters construction began. By 1912, the area had 12 established towns. 
the area became known as the Tintic Mining District, and the Ruby Hollow area name was changed to Eureka. Over 3,400 people called Eureka home, and over 8,000 people called the rest of the Tinnock area home. Some of the towns in the area are only inhabited by ghosts these days. Towns like Roseville, Robinson, Diamond, Mammoth, Silver City, Ironton, and Tintic Mills, just to name a few. Eureka has never claimed the designation of a ghost town, even though the population dropped off dramatically after the mining boom was over. In 2021, the population of Eureka was 658 souls. The town of Eureka is located 32 miles southwest of Provo, Utah. I love visiting Eureka and driving up and down the narrow streets. Main Street is just awesome. Some of the old buildings are being restored. Some have collapsed due to old age and the lack of money to maintain this historic area. Most people know where Eureka is located now because it is on their way as they head to the Little Sahara Sand Dunes or the town of Delta. But you really should take a weekend and make Eureka and the Tintic District your destination. There are still active mine operations in the Tintic District, so be careful not to trespass. Get permission from landowners before you explore on their land, or you might find yourself in a heap of trouble. The Tinnock District is a rock-hounding heaven, with crystals, agate, azurite, jasper, and pyrite, just to name a few, of the specimens that can be found in the area. If you are a rock or crystal lover, be sure to stop in and visit Crazy Mary's Rock Shop on Main Street in Eureka. It is right across the road from Orn Porter Rockwell's old cabin that has been preserved and is a fun stop also. One of the little known facts about the Tintic District is that the discovery of old Spanish mines have been found in this area, and it is estimated that there are probably more that are still waiting to be discovered. You see, the Spanish would disguise and hide the entrances to keep their treasure safe until they could return. Many of these old mines were never opened again after being closed up. Some of these old mines were found back in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Who knows? With a little searching, maybe you will find an old Spanish mine and the rich buried treasures in its tunnels. The Tinnock Mountains are full of precious metals and have been giving up their treasure for hundreds if not thousands of years. Even if you don't find an old Spanish mine, you can still find treasure in just visiting the old town sites and exploring the ruins left to the tumbleweeds, ants, and the occasional snake. Keep your eyes focused on the ground. Every rainstorm can reveal old artifacts lost to time. Speaking of ants, ant piles can be a treasure trove. Often these hardy little workers will haul old artifacts and incorporate them into their houses of gravel and dirt. Take a metal detector to help identify the possible treasure mounds. Please don't destroy every anthill you see. We have also found small treasure near the old railroad tracks and the foundations of buildings. Just know you will find 300 old cans and nails for every quote-unquote treasure you find. It's all about the hunt. While visiting the Tinnock Mining District, you should also visit a site named Paul Bunyan's Woodpile. Paul Bunyan's Woodpile is located 17 miles south of Eureka. From the parking area, it is a 1.6 mile round trip, easy hike. Dogs are welcome on the trail, but they must be on a leash. 
chances are you will have this site all to yourself. The wood pile is a cluster of lava with the appearance of stacked wood. The formations were formed when lava cooled into six-sided columns. The columns measure about a foot in diameter and up to 15 feet in length. Now let me share just a little bit of history about some of the old mining towns that once had bustling streets and busy shops. Let's start off with the mining town of Silver City. Just 2.5 miles south of Eureka are the remains of Silver City. Silver City was the camp for the Sunbeam Mine. The Sunbeam Mine was in operation for 70 years and produced about $50 million in ore. With the success of the Sunbeam Mine, other mines soon sprang up around Silver City. They included Cleopatra and Pocahontas, Yankee Girl, Silver Moon, Treasure Box, and Four Aces. It didn't take long for Silver City to become a very busy town. After 70 rich years of operation, the Sunbeam Mine hit water. Water soon became the death blow to many of the mines in the area and to Silver City. With the mines flooded, it didn't take long for Silver City to become a ghost town. In 1870, prospectors were hunting the Tintic Mountains west of Eureka and found another ledge full of high-grade silver. It is said that one of the men yelled out, Boy, she's a mammoth strike! That mammoth strike became a mammoth mine. And by the summer of that year, a town of Mammoth had four hotels and six saloons. I don't think it had a library, but it soon had a population of around 2,500 residents. The old town site of Diamond has an interesting history. Guess what they discovered near this town site? I'll give you a hint. It's a hard crystal. If you answer diamonds, you're not alone. A man by the name of Steve Moore was trying to locate some lost cattle when he noticed some very shiny crystals in the rocks and dirt. Oh man, he was excited. He took them to his boss and both the men were convinced the small crystals were in fact diamonds. So the canyon where they found the Crystals was called Diamond Canyon. Diamonds in Utah. Crazy, right? They later found out that what they had discovered were not diamonds at all. But it was topaz. By the time they discovered their mistakes, silver was discovered in Diamond Canyon, and the mining camp called Diamond was established, and soon grew into a nice little town. The silver ore was extremely rich, and miners flocked to diamond. Stores, hotels, and saloons were popping up everywhere. One traveler wrote that diamond was one of the quietest mining camps in Utah, and that it had been several days since a murder had been committed. Listen to our episode on the old town of Frisco and you'll have a better understanding of this traveler's writings. Head out west and explore the rich history of this part of Utah. Take sunscreen, a camera, a small bag for the treasures you find, and plenty of water. Oh, and possibly a snake bite kit. Just saying. Thanks for joining me and listening to this episode. If you would like more information about this episode, we would love to hear from you. You can email us at info at undiscoveredutah.com. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, and be sure to follow us. Just search for Undiscovered Utah. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Undiscovered Utah. Join me next time as I share more about the Great Southwest.
Good night, everybody. 